Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to go over the ANSI SQL standard select statement. And the select statement is your basis uh, for all your other work that you're going to be doing uh, here throughout the live lessons plan because it's what basically enables you to uh, get data uh, from the database, which in about 90% percent of the instances of your interaction with the database is going to be writing statements to actually get data uh, out of the the database system that's true of whether you're writing um, you know a web application interface uh, or you're doing reporting or you're doing just a, a simple lookup uh, for someone from the tables of the database uh, so in order to begin, let's go ahead and let's open up the MySQL Query Browser. And you can see here that this is just a standard login prompt, so you can enter in your password. We'll select OK. So for these lessons, I've got set up the MySQL 24 uh, database over here. So I'm going to uh, click on the database in the schemata so that it actually brings uh, me up and connects me to the uh, SQL 24 instance. And you can verify that by looking in the uh, header pane up at the top. So I'm connected in SQL 24. And then uh, for this lesson, we're going to be paying particular attention to the customer table. And the customer table actually has uh, things like customer ID, uh, customer name, customer address, customer city, uh, all of that kind of stuff that we would want to uh, actually gather from the database. So when we're talking about getting data out of the database, we're talking about writing a select statement. So the select statement basically has three different parts to it. It has the keyword select, which tells the, the uh, query interface that, hey, you're going to actually be requesting some uh, data from the database. And then it's going to be uh, a, a column list for the list of columns that you want to have returned, or you can think of them as uh, data points. And then the last thing is the what's called the from clause, which is the uh, and its basic instance is uh, the keyword from, and then the table name that you want the select you know run against. So uh, in the very very basic uh, select statement, you are able to allow uh, allow yourself to use a keyword uh, or a key symbol by using the star symbol for your column list. And that column uh, list being star means that you want it to return all columns that are within uh, that table that is designated in the from clause. So in, in this instance, I'm saying, hey, give me all of the, the information back from the table. And in the from clause, I can replace this with the name of my customer table. Okay. Now the interesting thing is that in order to uh, go and end your statements, you need to have a semicolon at, at the end of them. And uh, the semicolon is basically your statement uh, ending denoter. And since uh, it is an ANSI SQL standard and MySQL is an ANSI compliant database engine, it's going to try to force you uh, to actually use that. So if, if I don't have the semicolon, and I, I, I can still execute right through the query browser, but it's going to uh, uh, be better if you go and you actually write the ANSI compliant version uh, because that way your queries will be able to transfer uh, more easily between different operating systems and databases. So whether you're working on uh, Oracle or SQL Server, you're going to have a much easier time of it if you just start out writing the ANSI compliant version and adding in uh, simple things like your, your semicolons at the end. So here I've got my basic select statement saying return all columns. I can execute by uh, clicking on the little lightning bolt here and you can see that it indeed added uh, all of the uh, columns uh, from the table on 
uh, on my uh, query result pane. And uh, then if I'm only wanting to return certain columns, okay, then what I would do is I would enter in a comma delimited list of the column names here. So instead of star, uh, let's just say that I want to see uh, customer ID and I want to see the customer name. So I type in my, my com, uh, comma delimited uh, list of uh, column names here. So I have customer ID, customer name uh, from customer table. Now I can go ahead and I can execute that and you can see that indeed it returned exactly uh, what I required of it which is uh, just the, the customer ID and the customer name. Now on your result sets you may want to uh, have uh, these columns ordered and when you're ordering columns it's always uh, by whichever uh, uh, ordering they show up within the select statement. So if I'm trying to write like some kind of report uh, for uh, my people and I need customer ID and then I need customer name and then they want uh, the zip uh, added in after that uh, then I would just add it in the order and then that would show up appended to the the end of the the result set but if I wanted to say have customer zip uh, before uh, this result I can simply change the order of the columns and then the column ordering is changed in my result set and this will be what you'll have to think about when you get into the habit of actually writing reports and, and such is that you basically want to structure the SQL query syntax to where uh, it matches the final output uh, of the reports. So uh, the next thing that you'll want to look at is uh, the use of what we call aliases. Now using aliases allows you uh, to specify uh, kind of a, a shortcut value for uh, your table names and your column names and to actually uh, rename them. So when I'm looking at an alias, uh, all I have to do is after the particular object, so for a table alias, uh, I can enter in a table alias of C for the customer table and now I can reference that just by a C dot within the syntax. And you can kind of see this if you use the shortcut menu of the My, uh, MySQL Query Browser because it's going to automatically add in an alias for you. So when when I go and I double click on a table object it automatically puts it in proper ANSI SQL form so that I can see it and you can see here that my customer table is aliased now by uh, the letter C so when I want to reference that particular table column somewhere I would I could do a C dot now the the query browser syntax will also allow me to to go and uh, pick the various values from here. So now you can see that uh, what I have here is that when the query browser syntax actually writes it out, it already automatically appends the C colon to it. Uh, and that C uh, period is actually telling it, oh, this is the particular uh, customer ID from the customer table because there are instances where we'll be selecting from multiple tables later on and you'll need to keep track of the tables. The other interesting thing that the query browser uh, shows off to us is the syntax of, of using uh, these uh, quote uh, hash marks uh, here and that is to actually reference uh, an actual uh, column name specifically by that name so uh, we don't necessarily need them if the column name doesn't have any uh, spaces 
within uh, the column name but if we had a column name of something like cust space ID we would actually have to to use that or uh, there are certain uh, keywords uh, that uh, are within the ANSI SQL standard that would force you to use that so say if I had a column called uh, check you can see that by the blue highlight this is blue highlighted just like this select statement so you can tell that this is a, a reserved word in uh, the language so you would actually go and you would have to you know put uh, your uh, hash marks around it to let it know that hey this is actually a column it's not the the special uh, ANSI SQL syntax uh, here that I'm talking about now you can also go in and you can also uh, give your uh, columns aliases too so I could easily alias this uh, column as uh, ID and I could easily uh, alias this column as name and then when I would execute now you can see that instead of being customer ID and customer name like they were before now they're actually ID and they're actually name and that uh, actually allows you to pretty up the syntax a little bit and make sure that it, it uh, looks coming out you know more human readable and it's just a nicer interface to actually use so uh, with that uh, we end our our lesson on the uh, select statement so uh, go back and try to put this to uh, use in your environment and we'll catch you on the next lesson looking to advance your career by acquiring new skills Tired of expensive off-site training programs? Wish you could learn from the best instructors in the industry? Look no further than Live Lessons. Self-paced, personal video instruction by the world's leading technology publishers. Each Live Lesson comes with a DVD featuring three to four hours of instructor-led classroom training, sample program code that allows you to work along with your personal instructor, and an example-rich study guide. Live lessons allow you to watch the entire course from start to finish or navigate directly to any of the individual lessons. You'll literally watch over the shoulder of your instructor as he shows you how to build state-of-the-art applications. Live lessons, the power of the world's leading technology experts at your fingertips. To learn more, visit MyLiveLessons.com today.